What's a kink you've always wanted to explore? Free use not like forever, but maybe like a day here or there where either my partner is free use for me to enjoy or vice versa. Also, I want to experience being dominated by someone in the room telling me how to please another. Like having a lady dom who encourages me or lightly forces me to please her friend or partner with the dom mostly staying hands off and watching maybe the occasional touch or guiding at most. I had that during COVID lockdown in late 2020. A girl I met on Bumble was going stir crazy like me and we started trading nudes and texting back and forth all day every day. She was hesitant to meet up because of the pandy, but after like a week of that, I told her, fafk lockdowns. I'm coming over to your apartment and I'm facking you in your kitchen, so I did. Like 10 months of blue balls for both of us so it was just animal rutting, but I also brought Thai food for afterwards, then I told her I'm coming back whenever I want, and I'm going to have her however I want her. She was so terrified of the Rona, that I think besides her neighbor I was her only human contact. At that point, she was work from home, so I'd just show up randomly knock on her door walk and not say a word or only commands and just bust in her. I'd call her my broodmare and tell her I'm going to put a pandemic baby in her during the sessions. I always brought food though so we could watch a movie or whatever afterwards. Consensual sleep S3X sleep is sacred in our house, and I do have relatively healthy hands on me. I laughed about it to him next morning, but he didn't remember sh tea, as awesome as it sounds while I'm a whack, right, now, and imagine getting some super good sleep, only to be woken up, and still super sleepy, it just wouldn't work out every time, I think the best approach is to just wait for them to start waking up on their own maybe, I dunno I remember one time fooling around with a girl while watching a movie, and we both fell asleep, she woke me up by kissing me. And I was like heck yeah make out time, but we both fell asleep mid kiss somehow. I remember I was trying to stay awake, but kept dozing off. But on the third wake up, I realized she fell asleep too with our mouths all up on each other. I feel like the same thing would happen with the wake up blowjob. Just both people falling asleep midway through. Sadly, this is the problem in my relationship. While my partner can stay asleep and enjoy sleep S3X, I'm such a light sleeper that her barely moving in bed wakes me up. So despite wanting to be woken up with S3X and having a partner that wants to do it, it's just not possible on my end. I've received consent from my partner multiple times, and each time I attempted they woke up too tired to want to continue. It's a shame because there is a lot of effort that goes into staying up after they fall asleep and very slowly getting their body aroused and wet while they remain asleep. My husband wanted this. I was super exhausted physically, could not have stayed awake or moved really and consented once because it seemed like the perfect timing he'd get what he wanted and I'd get the sleep I needed lol. Apparently it was so bad for him that it K1 led the fetish. And he's never asked again lol. I'm glad we tried, but it was definitely a case of reality not meeting expectation. Hope it goes better for you folks. Disclaimer for folks with traumas this has potential to trigger a lot of badge tea. Tread carefully. I sleep on my stomach with one leg curled up and T-Rex hands. Kind of like recovery position on the bottom with folded hands as close to my body as I can. I was with my then dom and we just kind of faffed whenever one of us wanted we discussed it beforehand. And both agreed if for any reason one of us didn't want to be faffed we'd safe word. It was summer, and his whole flat was boiling, so I guess at night, I kicked off all the sheets away. He used to stay up late play games. He said he didn't plan to faft me, didn't want to wake me up so he just light up his way with the torch on his phone. He said when he pointed at the bed, he could see me literally open wide for him. I woke up to him facking me relentlessly. It was so hot we didn't even cuddle much after. One of the hottest memories of him I have. I had a relationship where this was pretty common for a while. It programmed us for a bit where we would simultaneously wake up horny in the middle of the night, have a quickie go back to sleep, and then wake up in the morning saying, did we have S3X last night, or was that a dream? Overall a grand time, but we had to stop for the sanctity of our sleep schedules. It took a while for the random horny awakenings to die down, had no idea that was a potential side effect of practicing that kink. Recently was with a natural soft dom, and it's fafkin awesome. 
I love when she tells me what to do next grabs my hands and puts them where she wants demands I do something differently demands I do something in bed etc. It's adorable when I ask to take a drink or break. And she whines no cuddle time. It makes it all the sweeter when you do something she likes and you get softly rewarded with just like that or like that kind of stuff. Having S3X outside outside depends heavily where and how prepared you are. Forest ground stings a lot don't get me started on sand getting everywhere, so bring a blanket, but do yourself a favor and don't try it in a car, and comfortable af even in a station wagon. I've done in bushes a little farther up from the beach and on the actual beach. Not comfy. Was a teenager on a vacay with boyfriend and his family and family friends. I think sleeping in a bed with his mom that was cheating. And texting her side piece while the dad slept on a couch was more uncomfy though. Did get to see a scorpion in the tub master suite tub, so that was cool. When I was really young and started having S3X for the first time I wanted to try this. When I brought it up to my boyfriend at the time he got real quiet and thought for a good while. Finally, he told me he didn't know how since the woods didn't have beds. Ten years later I'm still laughing. Gnarly 30 years ago, a cheap hilly wooded land 30 miles outside the city to build a house. I found out that damn near every woman wants to faff outside in the woods, at least the ones I knew. So if you like outdoor S3X buy some land. It's wicked fun. I went out into the desert with an air mattress under the open stars in the bed of my truck. We had S3X several times each night. We did the same in the forest and in the hills behind my college. I had S3X with my girl bent over the passenger seat while we stood outside in a secluded turnout. Last memory is giving and receiving oral off a hiking trail in the slow time. I get excited every time thinking about those times. I've done that a lot actually, I just say one make sure you trust your partner with your life too, that it isn't your first time having S3X at all. 3. Bring a fluffy sweater or jacket to prop up the butt of whoever is receiving. Makes it a lot easier puts less stress on the knees. You're not gonna want to do it against a tree. So 4. Bring a picnic blanket. The best are the kid that are soft on one side and waterproof on the other. I've done it. While it's absolutely fun, it can also be problematic. I'll share two stories. My then girlfriend and I stopped by a small lake one afternoon. At one end, there was a small bridge we had just driven over. We went underneath the bridge and decided what fun it would be to make sweet love. And fun it was. But when we'd finish, I stood up and was rearranging my clothes when I happened to turn to look out at the lake where I spot a guy fishing maybe a mere 30 yids up the shore staring all gawk-eyed right at us, holding his fishing pole dumbly over the water. Not at all the feeling we were looking for. Believe me it wasn't the thrill of getting caught that inspired us. The other one is we went out driving one warm summer evening. A beautiful night. No aim no particular place to be. Gas was cheap in those bygone says just wandering. We were out in the countryside and passed by a large open field. Being adventurous we stopped the car and went out into this field where one or both of us got feeling frisky caught up in the lovely summer night magic. I told her I had a blanket in the car we could spread out on the ground. We did just that and had marvelous S3X out under the stars. Only after she suddenly said something like, Eh what is that? What's what? I tried not to panic. There's something gross on me. My first thought was I got reckless in the heat of the moment but no, it was a slug that got on her leg. That was the first. We soon discovered another, then another, until it was literally dozens of slugs. Attracted to God knows what but all seeming to converge upon us and get themselves all gummed up and stuck to the wool of the blanket. That was repulsive and really K1 led the vibe we had going. But those were minor setbacks and should in no way deter you from your own adventures, nor did they make me stop my pursuits. At S3X on the school roof a couple of times that was fun. Forest a bit more awkward bugs. Sanf Beach is a huge no-no I'm. Snow is actually pretty great if you have a good insulator underneath. Even better if it's above freezing. You can bask in Easter sun here in Norway. That's a great time to enjoy the outdoors. As a foreplay or like a leg job. When I was 16 minus 17, girl sat on my lap in a non-S3 Zool way. 
but then started grinding on my lap. We were sitting in class after it begun what made it even hotter somehow. Even though she seemed to be pretty embarrassed, sorny virgin teenage me was completely shocked to make anything out of it, how could I be not sure if she liked me? I have done this to my past boyfriends or fubs a lot. I also love to give him a neurotype massage and grind on his back. I have yet to participate in actual scissoring with another woman. I know most say it's overrated, but I want to try it nonetheless. I've partaken in many kinky activities stated in this thread, but have never been with a woman, so I would love to have a vanilla s 3 zool experience with one someday. Once had a co-worker do this to me while I was in a game of billiards. Didn't really ask for it and the person was a dude. He was totally wasted out of his mind at the time. I got a good laugh out of it and just took it as a confused dog trying to express his pent-up s 3 zool desires. We were away on a work trip 750 kilometers from his wife for a solid week. Being crushed. I love feeling my girlfriend's weight on me when she lays flat on top of me. And I'm thinking about how I wish she was heavier at times. How do I ask her to sit on my chest? How do I say please dear lord crush my bones into a fine dust? Maybe not a kink, but spontaneously facking a coworker in the office. An item on my NUSFW bucket list is to sleep with a coworker, but since I'm a male and value my job and don't want to get called down to HR, I wouldn't initiate it. I just follow her lead and match the same energy hoping it naturally happens. So Tleeter, it'll never happen. Worked in a hotel as a night porter three or so years back and has this happened to me. Multiple times, I chicken out most times due to HR and such but one of two were sober enough to make that decision if this counts, it's great story. Tied up stuff we did this once then, I found out I like to use my hands way too much, became very frustrating very fast, and not in the good way. But you may enjoy it, it was definitely a realization for me that having a fantasy doesn't necessarily mean I will enjoy it lol, sometimes, you just like the concept. I have a thing that I enjoy I'm not sure what you would call it, but basically, I just want to put my P in a V and just sit there and enjoy the sensation for a long period of time. Very little or no movement, I just love the feeling and want it to last as long as possible. I think it may be called soaking. I do this with my wife, but it doesn't last nearly as long as I want. I just kiss her, rub her back, etc. while she's on top of me. Honestly, might sound stupid. But doing that just makes you feel connected with each other like nothing else does. If you just faffed, and you just stay inside and make out for a long time that sh tea just hits different. Until she gotta go to the bathroom of course. Rope play self-tying is totally a thing, but make sure you have paramedic snips on hand and a tutorial to follow. Additionally never tie drunk or high remember that rope is more replaceable than limbs and always arrange a safe call. I would start with harnesses before proceeding to limb TIs and be very wary of tying both hands. Rope is beautiful, but if you do it wrong, it can maim or K1L very fast. Shouldn't need to be said, but never choke yourself with any type of restraint. A collar should never be elastic. Any TIs around the neck need to be fixed in length. Learn your knots so well that you understand them. Anything goes wrong with this. You are about a minute away from brain damage and four minutes from death. There is a reason autoerotic asphyxiation K1 L's a good number of people each year. If you have a collar of leather plastic or metal that is fixed size, you will not be choked by it. You can't cause that to happen. With an elastic collar you can. That by itself is reason enough. See people have no concept of how dangerous being choked really is. As I said it's minutes once you apply pressure around the neck throat. I can go deeper into this, but that's the basic idea. And yes, it's safer being choked by someone else if you really have to. That person won't go unconscious if something goes slightly wrong. I think I would like to try CNC with my boyfriend. I'm a very loud and independent woman. And my boyfriend is a big tall very strong guy who is quiet shy and is basically just down with whatever i say all my friends say that i swear the pants and they joke that i peg him but i don't do that and we have very good s3 x less dominant submissive and more mutual agreement he's a pretty vanilla guy but the knowledge that can can do whatever he wants to me is very much there he is so strong 
and not get out of his grip, and I would like to try and see if I could build him up to something like it, if not I'll survive though. Same situation for me, except my guy isn't shy except in the bedroom for this particular act at first lol. Instead of approaching the idea of CNC initially, I would suggest the idea of a dom mentality with you being tied up in a way, or even the idea of, I stop if you move, kind of thing with a blindfold. Always start with a discussion and inform him that you like that kind of thing, but you are completely fine if he isn't, but that there are ways you can both get a little bit of everything. Never start without a set safe word for both to use, and aftercare is huge on this subject. I cannot express how much aftercare can make or break this, especially for him. My husband started to feel very upset and almost criminal when we first started, and aftercare is the only way to help that sudden emotional downward spiral. I've always wanted to ask my partners if we could try CNC, but I'm really embarrassed. I don't know if that's the right word but a few years ago when I asked my ex to use simple restraints he got super weirded out and said it was rapey. That made me feel like shti, and as someone who has been S3 Zuli assaulted in the past, I felt awful even asking for it. Now, terrified to have the conversation again with a new partner. I want to be absolutely humiliated, told what to do and obey every order. In real life, I can never get the courage to ask for this, and I always seem to find men who don't naturally have any interest in it. I had never done any of this before until I had my current FWB suggest it. She came over with her own collar cuffs and leash. Damn was it hot. I wish someone had suggested it or I had thought about it years ago. I don't know what the actual terms for this style of recreation are. My only rule was that I don't physically harm her in any way. Any language activity or demand I had otherwise was completely on the table. She went and prepared with nothing but those items on crawled into the bedroom on all fours, then it was up to me to direct her via leash, tell her exactly what to do both to me and to herself, and enforce her acknowledgement with, yes sir, she wanted to be punished and made up sins that she had committed asking for penance, a little light slapping and choking at her request, the dirtier and more degrading I talked to her, the more into it she got, it drove her wild and gave me a huge adrenaline rush, one note though, as she lay there afterwards with collar and leash and cuffs locked together. I realized the incredible amount of trust it would have to take. She was effectively helpless, probably not for a casual encounter. Wouldn't feel comfortable doing this to my girl, but all in all this reminds me of cuckolding in the sense that it can be a slippery slope. Some might find the idea of it to be really hot in theory, but when it actually happens, they aren't emotionally prepared to deal with it. So like if a guy full send humiliated you, just can't imagine that going super well for for most. I can imagine the kind of scenarios, and it is definitely a thing, but it can be overwhelming for some. And the guy has to flip a pretty unique switch, and start being cool with some pretty messed up stuff pretty quick. I see a lot of bondage here, as someone who's done it in the bedroom, and professionally only a rigor in the professional sense. There's a lot into than just tying someone up. In different levels please do your research, and if you find someone who's willing to practice it with, you still set boundaries on what's okay, and what's not okay. I'd like to be a totally restricted factoy for a group of people, nothing violent or too hardcore, just tied and getting touched everywhere while my eyes closed so I won't be able to know what's coming next. Also, very attracted to the idea of force to orgasm while many people are watching and possibly documenting the scene. For reference, I'm a fairly S3 Zuli active switch, but bottom or soft dom leaning trans girl who'll try almost anything at least once even willing to try out scat vomit etc. As long as I'm not receiving the stuff rope bunny CSE blood play, like giving small cuts on both of our arms and legs and stuff and drinking each other's blood being watched during any type of BDSM orgy and consensual sleep S3X. Giving or receiving are the main ones that come to mind most partners or FWB ever had were mostly vanilla, and I just need someone who likes me for me and who also wants to be S3 Zuli exploratory. My fiancé and I have talked about her watching me and encouraging me getting faffed by someone with a real dick. We're both pan in the day, she told me I've wanted to try it so bad. 
I also really like it if I was faffed in chastity and creampied by more than one guy. Basically, just hoard out for our enjoyment. My second top fantasy is just to experience milking post-orgasm torture. So I am not into sounding, to be clear, but I had a stricture in my urethra, deep in, probably an inch from my bladder, which had caused tearing and scar tissue to form. And since you can't just not pee for a week to heal, urologist had me self-cathing twice a day, sticking a lube tube up my urethra all the way to my bladder, and emptied my bladder via hose. I expected it to be awful, but while it was uncomfortable, it wasn't painful, or at least, wasn't as painful as just peeing was prior, I could see how some people could enjoy the sensation. The biggest concern I would have is the sterilization. I had to be extremely careful with the catheters, washing hands thoroughly, using alcohol wipes at the tip, never touching any part that would go in, etc. I feel like sounding would be a one-way ticket to UTI town without a near oct level of cleanliness. All that to say, maybe try self-catheters, they're designed to go in, so it shouldn't be bad. Get a urology nurse to train you first though. My girlfriend being a hot wife, we are talking about it and fantasize about it, but not sure it will be a reality in the near future, unless we stumble on some guy we both trust and are comfortable with. We have one in mind but not sure how we would approach him with it. We have talked about this a lot over a long time, and we both know that it may or may not affect our relationship in a negative way. That's why it's still a shared fantasy between her and me, and not a reality. It's not rushed or pressured by any part. Weird how I would need a disclaimer on a kink question.